Water power swallowing, water bottle don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful homie, you spilling it. Welcome, welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesday webcast. I'm here always with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. And can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica, who does a marvelous job. And today, we have the pleasure of having two very concerned citizens from Jackson, Michigan. One is very near and dear to my heart. (laughs) And they are here to talk about some of the issues that are going on in Jackson and around the Michigan plating property. We have Andrea and Dale here today. Thank you both for taking the time out of your schedule to be here. We really appreciate you coming on and talking about the issues in your community. And so it's a pretty short show and I'll just turn it over to Valerie Jean who has a first question for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so, um, so, uh, well, it's actually kind of sad why we're here to talk about this, but I'm really, yeah. really happy that we are because nobody knows about it. Nobody's talking about it. It's very, very important. Um, and, you know, so it, when we're talking about contamination and super fun sites and things like that, it affects everybody in the surrounding areas and stuff. So it's so important that people know about it. So welcome. Thank you for coming on to talk about it. Thank you. Can you tell our listeners about the mission or plating property in Jackson, Michigan, and how it ended up being deemed a super fun site? How did it, how did we end up here? Yes. Yeah, so The Michener Plating, first, thank you for having us on the show. Um, I'm very excited to be on the show today and on Water Wednesday. Um, So Michener Plating is a plating factory, was a plating factory. Um, It began in 1935, and it went to 2007. So the thing about what Michener Plating did was the right on the banks, the east shore of the Grand River, The Grand River runs from Hillsdale and Jackson counties all the way to Lake Michigan through Grand Haven. So the thing about the Michener site is that um, Michener was a plating site for automobile parts that made like seatbelt shiny and different type of metal plating. Okay. And so from, I think it was 1989 until the site was foreclosed upon in 2007, um, Michener plating received violations from the state every single year from 1989 to 2007. So almost 20 years, right? And so... What does the a violation reason, look like? like does, is that like getting a ticket? Kind of. It's OSHA violations. So when researching this, it was very difficult... Um, as you had mentioned that there's not much about that, about the Michener plating. There's several like articles through the years, things on the EPA website describing um, kind of why Michener is a super fun site. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's not a full on detail of what that contamination looks like. So to answer the question why um, it was, flagged as a super fun site by the EPA, I think it was in 2015, was um, how it became to get that title, was that, like I said, from 1989 to 2007, um, the Michener plating was operated, ran, and every single year it received violations during that period. So... These violations like include um, improper waste of chemicals into yeah, the Grand River. Yeah, I saw River. pictures from it. It looked like there was a lot of like these drums full of like chemicals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are um, the groundwater was tested for PFAS. 
there are there were big drums of arsenic there were um bottles and different things that were found that were called good cyanide there was big um when they know cl- when they started cleaning this out in 2015 that's when they um created a super fun site which means the EPA is the EPA uh, is putting this site as a priority because it is so polluted um, that there were big open vats of po- white unknown powder and different chemicals that they didn't even know what these chemicals were. And they have like cleaned out um, since 2015, they have cleaned out over 1100 drums of um, chemicals of barrels of chemicals um but there are still in the ground there's giant barrels filled with chemicals that are buried that are affecting the groundwater and that's with the pollution of PFAS and with arsenic and the other chemicals Just the worst that stuff are possible right and we all know that PFAS is you can't clean up PFAS it's no, it's, it's just for- there it's called yes it's, it's a forever chemical so the, the, the fact moron of saying good cyanide like what it's like They're... it's like safe le- levels of lead there's no safe levels of lead but they give exactly. you you know the epa is like oh there's this safe level of 15 parts per billion or whatever there's no safe level of lead and you know there's no good cyanide absolutely <laughs> Come on. absolutely um what do the contaminants look like and how is it actually affecting the water in the Grand River as we speak? So one of the things that I can speak on is that, I mean, if you go by that site, it's obviously a dilapidated building, but from the blind eye, you're not going to see much from the outside. It just looks like a, a abandoned building, but we, um, we, I, I manage a neighboring property um, that is considered a, a brownfield. Um, it was a contaminated site from um, what was the Acme Company that they tore. It was a, it was an old factory um, at the corner of Ganson and Mechanic Street. Um, this is kind of kitty corner to the Mickner Plating area, um, and it also ran along the Grand River. Um, we now manage that site. Uh, but at the time when they shut that site down, they, the EPA came in, they took the building down and they issued that it had to sit for 20 years. Um, and nothing happened to it, uh, and nothing could be built on it. It just had to sit for 20 years. And that was their way of kind of cleaning up that site. And my concern is, you know, now after the 20 years, of course, there's less contamination on that site, but where did all that contamination go? Um, Again, there's there's high levels of there's, you know, there's like a 400, 500 page report from the EPA on this site. And there's high levels of all of this awful stuff. I mean, granted, there isn't PFAS wasn't necessarily one of the ones that popped up, but there's, you know, arsenic, all these all these other, you know, horrible things. And it's not there anymore. It's definitely not in the numbers, because my assumption is that the water runoff over the last 20 years went into the Grand River and it flushed it away um, because the river is right there neighboring that site. And my concern is that that's what is going to be the response for this building is that they're just going to take it down and let it sit. And then all that contamination is just going to be flushed into the Grand River and affect the entire community at a whole. And that's that's a drinking water source, right? Is, is Is the Grand River a drinking water source? Uh, I don't know. Actually, I mean, I know that there's Not Grand River goes through. I don't know who processes the Grand River for drinking water specifically, but I do know it's a it's a um, it goes through a lot of the major towns in Michigan. And it's a place where people are kayaking and canoeing and swimming and fishing. And, you know, the, people are using the river as humans use rivers. Um, I don't know necessarily what cities if if they use it as drinking water and how that's processed. I don't think the city of Jackson itself uses water from the Grand River. Um, They have their own water processing facilities. But um, my concern is not necessarily for the drinking water, but everything else 
that is affected that by that. And right. I mean, even if it's going through the Grand River and then leaching into the ground, how does that affect well water and other sources of water that aren't being treated? Yeah, because it's all connected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are there any plans of like um, of them? When, well, I guess we know that there's plans of them cleaning this up. It's, that's why they've named it a super fun fight, right? But um, have you heard if it's gonna if they're gonna let it sit for that twenty years, or and what does that mean for the properties around it? So the only thing that I know is that we've been contacted by the EPA or at least a community outreach group for them that's been contracted. And they're trying to right now do a community survey on um, just getting feedback. And so I've emailed them to set up an appointment so that we can talk to them directly. Um, but my understanding is that these appointments are being done um, both in person and by Zoom but I haven't had any further feedback on setting that up. Um, and I've they've talked about putting together a community task force. I've written them and told them I would be interested in that. And I haven't really heard much back about the progress in that. Um, I know that they said, you know, we're gonna get this task force going in the spring. Oh no, it's been pushed back to the fall. Now it's gonna be in the winter. Oh, it might be next spring. So it, it feels like it's kinda, I don't know if it's necessarily being pushed back because, um, I don't, you know, I don't know why it's being pushed back, but it's a big project. Um, but there's not a lot of information that's been released so far. Yeah, you're probably going to have to pressure them, like pressure, yeah. pressure them. Um, an organized campaign, even at this point, it's something that um, that keeps the pressure on. How can uh, people get involved and assist or help with uh, any actions or uh, the fight to ensure that this area is cleaned properly um, and that the water is not contaminated or further contaminated by these uh, Clean chemicals in the, in the process of actually cleaning this area as well? One of the things I would say, um, and I don't, you know, Dell has more um, feet on the ground action regarding water. And so she'll probably have a little bit more of the hands on stuff. But a big thing for me is just education and educating people that this is even there. There's a lot of people in Jackson that don't even realize this is a PFAS site let alone a super fun site and the level of um, contamination that is really sitting there. Um, and I think the more we spread the word and we tell people and we tell people why it matters and why they should be concerned, then the more action we can take. Yeah, I um, just to jump in with Andrea, I completely agree with um education right now at this point because a lot of people as she had said um, a lot of people in town don't know about this site we've driven by it there's been graffiti at this site where teenagers and kids for years like an underground kind of art place not knowing that this has been dubbed one of the most toxic sites in the united states um Gosh. according to like the news and different articles and so like it's like it being labeled as a super fun site means that it is one of the most poisonous sites that there is and that it's a priority for the EPA. Mm -hmm. So as she said, education. And the other thing is, um, as Andrea was mentioning before about the EPA and these Zoom meetings is create Google alerts or go on the computer and see when the EPA is doing these community talks or these in individual Zoom meetings. Because from what I understand, there hasn't been really any coffee table, like community coffee hours or anything like that, that you would do with a big environmental kind of a disaster or environmental site like this. Yeah, you're probably gonna there have to pressure them. Right, so there hasn't been an open forum for that. It's been like individual one-on-one -on -one 
half hour meetings from the EPA that you have to schedule. And from my understanding that this is during the week, like I wasn't able to do it because I was at work. Mm -hmm. So um, that leads to like this kind of um, individualized instead of it being brought into community, like community discussion. Because one thing Andrea and I had discussed is that trying to find the people who has information on this site, like community members, mm -hmm. because we don't even know where to go to gather that information or who has been here and has done the work around this site because there's yeah. just not that much information. There's articles about the pollution and toxicity, but there's not like a broad in education about this site and a knowing. Right. Yeah, and I think that's the problem is because when you're, you know, you're actively concerned and then you're trying to find answers or you're trying to find someone to talk to or you're writing the EPA with questions but not getting your questions answered. And then they came out with this, like what Dell's talking about. They just put out a um, little postcard and they're like, hey, we're doing a community um, discussion. And it made it sound like it was something that they're opening it up to the community, doing education around but they were just 30 minute individual things. And it's like, it feels kind of secret. It's like they're keep, yeah. they're trying to protect something and that they're trying to um, isolate individuals instead of bringing us together to talk about the issue, they're isolating us in individual meetings. And there's something about it that just doesn't feel good when you're no. trying to find out more information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, secrets it, it, not being transparent in any situation makes the public not trust you and they know this but they, also they know when people get together that they're gonna they're gonna fight back they're, especially when it comes to their water especially when it comes to their land and their soil right they're gonna fight back and if you've got a lot of people concerned they're gonna find ways to put a lot of pressure on them and they don't like that they don't like it when we act together and we act in unison together they don't like it. They don't like it when we're organizing. I'm sorry, Nicole, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's just, it's just the old adage. Like, this is literally war for our lives. And the first thing opposition does in war is divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if they don't, if they prevent us from banding together, it's easier for them to get away with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Most and definitely. They're, they're the Environmental Protection Agency. You got one job, <laughs> like one, but it, at every level, they fight us every single level, every single le level they act, um, on, on the, on the corporation's behalf and not on the, they never on the people's behalf. How dare they call themselves the environmental protection agency to be fair. It's just. Are there any final thoughts, y'all, before we wrap this up? And I, I, for our for our listeners, please, um, we're gonna put uh, we're gonna put some links down below and things like that. But please share this out. Are there any other final thoughts, um, my friends, that we uh, that we missed out and that people really need to know? My final thought is that you know we're talking about Jackson, Michigan, but and you know this is a the big site it's as Dell mentioned it's one of the most polluted in the country um but this isn't unique to jackson this is an issue that's happening all over the state and you might not necessarily be aware that it's a concern in your own community and i think that if we you know just roll over on a site like this like it you might as it's easy to just roll over on any site within our state right. and you know we're the capital of the fresh water and our job right. is to protect that. And That's so right. I feel like it takes a state to help even Jackson. It takes everyone to help uh, Flint. You know, it's, it takes all of us to make that difference. That's right. Any final thoughts, Del? So to kind of um, reiterate about like, that that the Grand River itself being like going through other parts of communities is it literally links into like Michigan. So to think about like this as a whole, like having the most one of the most polluted sites here. I mean, our community is what roughly thirty thousand people, um, but we have a lot of post-industrialization. 
um, that happens here. And to think that this sits right on the beginning parts of the Grand River that goes through Horrifying. all these different communities, uh, 200 and something miles. And the Grand River Basin itself is like 5,000 something miles from my understanding. But the river itself travels 200 and some odd miles. I don't remember the exact number to Lake Michigan. So something that um, I often hear on Water Wednesdays when I tune in and listen to um, one of my favorite webcast shows um, is that the importance of protecting the Great Lakes and that even though that this town is like a small town and that um, this site is literally can affect the whole connected. of the Great Lakes, the health of the Great Lakes. It's all connected. And the one thing that brings us all together is water. So Absolutely. it's important that it is. It's the one thing. It doesn't matter what our ideologies, political stances, anything is. It's the one thing that brings us all together. So that's why it's so important for people to know about it. And I know that it was, you know, hard for you guys to talk about this today because people, people like, you know, get targeted for things. So thank you for, they do, um, they, do. they get targeted. Um, certainly in Jackson, Michigan, <laughs> it's no different. Um, so I really, really appreciate you coming on. It was uh, brave and important. And I hope that our listeners are able to learn more and um, certainly learn more about the Superfund sites in Michigan. I looked them up once we started talking about this, and there's a lot of them. You're right, Andrea. There's a lot of them. Yeah, and lot, all of them. I would have never thought. Yeah. Yeah, people should look them up, understand them, and we should all come together and fight against it and make sure that um, it's getting cleaned up and um, not leaching into the water. It just it, it has to be fixed. Well, thank you all so much, and thank you to our listeners. Thank you, Nicole, for always going down this journey with me, Dell and Andrea. Um, I hope to have you back on uh, in, at some point in time so that we can talk about what it looks like to resist this and to pressure the EPA and all of that um, uh, down the line when it gets to that. We might have to mobilize a little bit first. Um, to our viewers, thank you for always tuning in. Um, it's really important uh, that your, your support is really important to us and we appreciate it. Try to take care of each other and try to stay afloat. Bye. Bye. Water needed to swim in it, more valuable than oil. Be careful, homie, you spilling it. <laughs>